Hey y'all, so a while back, OnePlus sent over their OnePlus 10T 5G for me to check out on the channel. And now that I have played around with it for several months and the price has dropped, a lot, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, if you like thoughtful tech reviews and security and privacy content as well, subscribe because that's the kind of content that I have been making here for years. I love talking about tech and if I can answer any kind of geeky or nerdy questions for you, I will. All right, let's get into this review. So I have no issues with not buying a current generation phone. In fact, many times I will gift my older devices to friends or family if the phone in question is still receiving security updates. Now, since the OnePlus 10T has dropped in price and it now offers five years of security updates. I think it's a solid choice, but you will have to settle even though their slogan is never settle, on a lot of design choices. Currently, you can find a new 10T on Amazon for less than 500 bucks. I have seen it as low as $320, and that's with the 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. It did come out about a year ago in two different colors, and I like this brushed glass material design. I think it's very pretty and very fancy, although it does have a plastic frame. Now, I noticed immediately that this phone did not include the OnePlus 11 alert slider physical switch on the side of the phone. And I also noticed that it's really lightweight compared to my other phones, likely because of that plastic chassis. Unfortunately, there is no IP rating, which I'm sad about given that I like to take my phones into the mountains a lot and it snows and it rains up in the mountains. I do like that there's a screen protector pre-installed. I already kind of messed mine up though, <laughs> to protect that 6.7 inch flat fluid AMOLED display. It is pretty nice for entertainment and gaming at 120 hertz, but the resolution is 1080 by 2412 or 1080p. So you'll notice the aspect ratio is 20 by nine. So we've got some blank space beside any normal YouTube videos whenever it's rotated. However, you can always expand the video and zoom in or zoom out as you see fit. But when you do that, you're going to lose some of the video at the top and the bottom like normal. So continuing with some media, like I have YouTube music pulled up here, the speakers are pretty Pretty average. I would say nothing stands out to me as being spectacular with them. They are stereo, but if you really need some bass, I would recommend using a good pair of earbuds. Now this phone does include a charging adapter in the box. And as you can see here, it is 160 watts. That is really nice. The cool thing about this phone though, is that it can take advantage of charging speeds up to 125 watts here in the US. There are voltage restrictions that exist, hence the wattage difference. That means that you could get 100% battery from zero in less than 20 minutes. I did test this from 0% battery and it is true. And that's pretty awesome. So I think that that is a huge reason why somebody may be interested in this phone. That charging speed is a big deal. And in terms of battery drainage, at 10.30 a.m. I had 100% battery after a full day of streaming 1440p video at full brightness. I finally got it down to 7% battery at 10 p.m. And the screen on time for that time was 10 hours for me. So that's a very, very nice battery in this product. There is no wireless charging in this model model though. Bit of a trade-off there, especially if you use wireless charging often, or you have already invested in wireless chargers that you would expect to be able to use. I generally like Oxygen OS, built on Android. It is intuitive, it's very easy to use and easy to understand, and it's quite fast as well. So switching between applications or pulling up different things is pretty quick. So I'm quite happy with it. The CPU is a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Multitasking was definitely a breeze in terms of usability, and generally I had a positive experience. Now, both the face unlock and the fingerprint unlock were very quick and quite responsive. It's kind of weird, but I did have some shimmery like glitter lotion on my hands from Bath & Body Works, but it still worked with my fingerprint, even though there was glitter all over my hands. Now, you can create much stronger pins in Oxygen OS if you prefer to go the pin route, like six numbers instead of four. So I appreciate that OnePlus put that custom security option in there that you can add. My speed tests were exactly what I was expecting out of this phone. It is 5G, it supports Wi-Fi 6, so I was getting around 250 to 300 down, and 200 upload is generally how fast my phones have been in this area, and this one matches those findings. There are multiple cameras on the rear, including a 50 megapixel f1.8 aperture 
temperature wide, an 8 megapixel f2.2 120 degrees ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel f2.4 macro lens. Now I'll go through a whole bunch of photos here that you can check out. I took this phone with me to game night to test the cameras in low light environments. The macro was impressive, even picking up on little droplets of water on a beer can and the details in my nail polish. The ultra wide was pretty grainy in low light. I wasn't super impressed with it, with the main lens doing a lot better job at keeping details while not overcompensating. Unfortunately, movement was blurry and colors were a little off on the ultra wide as well. Well, zooming to 10 times created pretty potato photos, and y'all know how I feel about potatoes. I don't think potatoes belong in smartphones. They belong boiled, mashed, and stuck in stews, as Samwise Gamgee told us in Lord of the Rings, and I believe that to be very, very true. Potatoes. The best lens on here is obviously that 50 megapixel main lens. It does a solid job of keeping colors natural, keeping details clear without over sharpening, with a natural bokeh and aperture for for a professional looking blur. The lenses do a much better job overall in high brightness settings, like outside on a sunny day. I was able to get a lot of pictures of like my dog and selfies, for example, and some zooms pictures of flowers. So I generally thought that in terms of usability and brightness, it looked a lot better. Video Max is out at 4K60. The image stabilization I think is great. And I do have some examples of the audio that you can see here. And I get the monitor. <laughs> Never mind, took us. You are <laughs> Damn Good job. Camera. Now for that selfie camera. Kind of hard to see with this background, but there is a selfie camera there. It's 16 megapixels, f2.4 aperture, with the video mixing out at 1080p 30. I did take some selfies during our Magic the Gathering night, and generally they look really great, though my skin tone is a lot warmer than normal, so I come off as kind of pinkish in some of those photos. In comparison, here are some selfies in high brightness outdoors as well. I think video in low light is pretty grainy, so here here is a sound test for y'all to check out. Non-land, non-enchantment permit wait, wait, wait. that player controls. Oh, okay. We go Thantus, Marchesa, what are you doing to it? and the centaur. Also, check out how the background lighting kind of pulses whenever I was moving that card in front of me to reflect the overhead lights. Now, what kind of reviewer would I be if I did not mention that OnePlus does include a pro mode as well? So if you do want to dabble with different settings like these down at the bottom, you do have that option and that can give you some really nice photography. Now, this OnePlus phone did remove the telephoto lens and the partnership with Hasselblad, although Hasselblad is in the newer OnePlus 11 as well as the 10 Pro. Now, if you are already a OnePlus fan and you want to save some money and not go all out on a flagship, then yes, this is a solid choice. The biggest reason being that incredibly advanced charging speed. I love that charging speed, which to be honest, we don't find in a lot of phones promoted here in the US, but it's still missing a lot of specs now in 2023 that we can find in competition for the same price point. For example, the Google Pixel 7a is also less than 500 bucks and it does have IP67 ratings for water and weather resistance. It is also equipped with wireless charging, and I would argue that the cameras are better on the 7A too. So this is one of those phones where you really have to weigh what matters most to you before buying it. Do you need fast charging, but you don't really care about the cameras? Then there you go. You might want to choose a OnePlus 10T. Do you prefer having wireless charging? You might want to choose a competitor. So I really can't say you need to buy this phone because there are quite a few things that you would have to settle with. Now, I do intend to also check out the OnePlus 10 Pro, even though that one came out quite a while back, and hopefully the OnePlus 11 shortly after that to get you up to date on the newest from OnePlus. If you have a hot take, then you can comment those down below, and if there are other sub $500 phones that you want me to review, leave a note. Thank you so much for subscribing if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.